And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, our next attraction tonight, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. This in the featherweight division. Once again, your three judges scoring at cage side. Abe Bellardo, Jason McCoy, and Jackie Dinkin. And your referee in charge of the action, the third man inside the cage, Marcos Rosales. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, Esta Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Standing five feet, 10 inches tall, he weighed it officially 145 and one half pounds. Tonight, making his professional debut, he joins us from Henderson, Nevada. Please welcome Diego Melendez. And next, his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A wrestler standing five feet even, official weight, 145 pounds. He, too, makes his professional debut tonight, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Boise, Idaho, here is Tyler Hulk Hans Freeland. Diego. All right, gentlemen, we've already gone over the rules. Obey my commands at all times and protect yourself at all times. Let's have a good fight. Touch him up. All right, fathers have gotten their instructions. Here we go, about to get underway. <clears throat> Excuse me, Tyler Freeland. Anyone named Hulk Hands, I would just don't want to fight him my very first fight. Efren, you know, look at that height advantage. Is that any advantage to Tyler at all? Because, you know, Diego's got to punch down, basically, instead of being able to throw a, a normal punch? Oh, uh, you know, he, he, uh, he does have a very uh, reach advantage. You know, he's going to have to go out there and, uh, and use it. But some people really don't know how to use their reach advantage, you know. Uh, but uh, apparently, uh, Freeman is actually, uh, Freeland is actually pushing the pace a little bit, you know, trying to stay inside. Now, he can use that height for his advantage. I mean, he can get leverage. And one thing you don't want to do if you're Melendez, you don't want to get down to his level. You don't want to bend over too much. That will negate some of your power. Oh, oh strong wow. right that there. beautiful takedown. Talk about using leverage and power. And yeah. he is immediately inside control. And Melendez, as you can see, he kind of bent down a little bit, and he found himself in a, in a, a situation where he could get kind of spun and flipped. Obviously, Freeland does have to stay compact. Uh, you know, Melendez, his legs, his arms, he's got longer limbs. He's really going to be able to work the, the triangle choke, arm bars, that sort of thing. Freeland admits his compact frame makes him very, very subject to triangle chokes. Yeah, but he also has small limbs, so he can get out of most of the uh, submissions, you know. So we just got to see if he stays busy on top. Very true. Freeland attacking from the top. Melendez was able to regain half guard underneath. Again, he's, he's listed at five feet tall. I mean, it looks better on paper than 4'11", before anything. So, But he's actually pretty thick for he's his... Heavy. Uh, he's a heavy guy. Yeah. yeah. So that, that can use him on the ground. You know, he has leverage on the ground a little bit. And this goes in Freeland's favor, I think, because he can throw his punch. He's got the shorter arm, so when you're in tight like that, he can still get off and throw some quick little short right hands, left hands. He just has to be really careful with those long, uh, long limbs. Definitely, you know, if you posture Melendez, up too much. Know. And, of course, this is uh, one of our two fights tonight that is three-minute rounds, so, uh, you know, he's controlling with just a minute left, and there's those elbows coming in. Compact, strong. It doesn't have a huge range of motion, but, you know, look at the, the biceps. <laughs> those are powerful. Melinda's just hanging on underneath, trying to keep nice. things close. He's trying to get that crucifix right there. And he's so small, you know, so oh, compact. Yeah. Freeland there steps over his beautiful crucifix position. Melinda's oh, wow. is in a bad spot. He's able to work his way out. Good move. And big oh, hand. big left hand. Oh, wow. Melinda scored a huge left there on the break. He's able to tie up with him. Oh, and he's cut oh, over he's his right eye. Nice right oh, hand. Oh, <laughs> Throwing bombs. Yeah. Freeland wanted one more takedown. Well, at least we know he's not. Oh, oh, big knee. Rosales looked like he wanted to stop. Big right hand back up top. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. What a finish to the round. Wow. There oh, was geez. a hesitation with the big knee from Melendez, and that may have cost him. That fight might have got stopped had he leaped on him and threw a couple big hands. It did. It looked like, uh, if we see the replay, it looked like Rosales tried to come in and call that fight. He's over there talking to the timekeeper right now, maybe explaining his actions, but he looked like he wanted to come in and stop the fight. He did not, so this fight carries on right now. Uh, Tyler Freeland obviously a little bit cut over the right eye there. Unbelievable action. Here comes the replay. 
this was big the, punches right yeah, there. This was as punches. he escaped. He backed him up into a corner. As you can see here now, it get a little tangled up. And he'll, he'll actually get free and throw some more punches here. I think this is where he got cut, right? Yeah, he's yeah. already cut at oh. this point. Yeah, inside there, there was where it started to open up, but the big knee is what did the big damage, and I think what stole the round. I think uh, Melendez was doing a good job, uh, uh, you know, of, of staying tight underneath, but Freeland was controlling from the top. But with that damage at the end, I think you got to give the round to Diego Melendez. Very but, tough round. But now we know he's not afraid to sit there and strike, you know, and he, he has a chin. He certainly does. He recovered very quickly and uh, was winging those hooks inside as well. Got to, got to be careful of that tie clinch. That's obviously something that's uh, not going to be a good spot for him. He does not want to eat any more of those Diego Melendez knees. I think both fighters earned each other's respect as far as uh, throwing some big punches. I saw eyes rolled on both guys. Certainly. Freeland had a nice takedown that first round. I don't know if he wants to go back to that. I'm a little surprised Melendez is not trying to use his reach. You know, he has long arms, you know. Right there, the jab would be real nice. Yeah. And any time... Freeland throws a kick, I would I would counter him. Sure. Yeah, and Melendez could, could use those kicks to his advantage too from the outside. He's actually beating that in, that outside leg pretty good, so. Ducked under oh, punch, nice, nice outside trip on the takedown. Good setup for Freeland on that one. Freeland back to half mount. It was a good position for him here in the first round. One of the other things that's really good for Freeman is he's so low to the ground, you know, he's so short. It's hard for Melendez to get under him, you know, every time uh, he takes a shot. That's why he's got to make, make his reach work for him. Yep. But like we said earlier, it's tough to jab down. You really have to be pinpoint with your jabs. In the first round, Freeland was really dominant from this half-mount position. You remember, he went to that crucifix, and I think his side works against him in a crucifix position because he doesn't have as much base across the body, and it looked like Melendez was able to escape. But I think if he can stay in this position, side control, a, a north-south here, a half-mount, those types of positions seem to work a lot better for him. Actually, he's able to use his upper body strength where I think that's a lot of his mass is, and uh, that, can, that can wear a guy out trying to spin out of that all night long. Side control, Sean Tompkins is letting him know from his corner that he could take the knee on belly, advance to half mount instead of full mount. Look how calm he is in there. He took a break, looked up at Sean Tompkins, got some, got some coaching. Tyler Freeland very calm on top. Tyler Freeman trying to go for a submission on top, but on bottom. Melendez is, he's no rookie. His record may indicate he's, you know, his first fight, but he's showing some good moves. He's showing some good counters on how uh, to keep himself in position, and he's looking for his, uh, an opportunity to spin out here. Wow, went to the mount, uh, went to the full mount. Yeah, Melendez tried to roll free there. Instead, he finds himself mounted. And this is the first time that uh, Melendez has, has been out of the first round. You know, I don't know if the, oh. the added time is bothering him at all, but he's mounted right now. And this is where the Hulk hands would come into play. Freeman trying to back him up into the cage. You also have to be careful right there, you know. Uh, Melendez trying to use the cage. Yeah, you see him right there putting his foot on the cage, trying to, trying to push over. A couple of short hands there at the end there. Almost hit him with a right after the bell, but didn't. But and Tyler Freeman came back and he, he, Freeland won that round. Absolutely. Yeah. Freeland dominated that round from start to finish. Not nearly as much damage done, but his eyes look clear. Uh, it doesn't look like he's got any lingering effects from the first round. And uh, as we watch the replay here, you can see ducks under, gets the fight to the ground. He's very powerful and got great technique there as he steps over the outside leg, puts Melendez on his back, and he couldn't get up from that position. Yeah, one thing he could have done, as we saw in the first fight with, with uh, Griffin, he was susceptible of uh, Freeland for a, a knee. He came in, he didn't set it up, we talked about that earlier, and but yet he was able to, because of Melendez was worried about uh, this guy taking him down, he didn't really pay too much attention to it and allowed him to uh, wrap him up and take him down. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think if you're, if you're Melendez, you got to stay on your feet at all costs, use that reach. He did not use the reach at all in that second round. Third and, and I've got this fight up in the air. Yeah, it's been working for uh, Freeman to take him down and control him. And as we all saw in the first round, you know, Melendez is tight clinch. 
dangerous. Yeah, very dangerous. There you go. Throw, if you throw some punches, he can be in a better position, right? Throw the jab. There it is. There that right hand is there. Straight yeah. right hand is there for him on that. Well, every time when uh, when Freeland comes in, you know, Melendez has him right there. Either way. Freeland does keep his hands pretty low. Oh, nice right hand up top from Freeland. He really does like to wing those hooks. Getting a little cut on Freeland, uh, open up a little bit. In order to throw a punch with some actual power, Freeland has to get right up in oh, your body. Right. Oh, if he can get this takedown. Freeland working hard for the takedown. Melinda's defending well, oh. but he is slammed down with authority. Hulk Freeland has Freeland. power. He has some power, that's for sure. He's got some strength in that compact body. And again, Diego Melinda seemed very com you know, comfortable in that second round, just laying on his back, holding things tight. But he gave that round away. I think right now, working that closed guard, I, I don't understand. You need to be opening up and doing whatever you can to either get back to your feet or, or work a submission. And, and I would say get back to your feet. Oh, yeah, he's taking oh, yeah. several oh. big hands. You don't want to take those mini Hulk hands. He's, he's really trying to get a triangle here. You can see. He's trying to work his legs back, but in, in, in the meantime, he's taking big hands to the face, and he doesn't want to do that. He, he, nice pass right there. Smooth pass. Yeah. Half mountain. This has been a, a strong position for him, although this time Melendez does buck free. Uh, Look at Freeland right back on him. Right back wow. down. There's no answer for that small, compact takedown he's doing, you know, every time he stands up. Well, Melendez showed good technique, was trying to sprawl out, defend it, but you're right, he's, he's right there. He's got the leverage on you already. Well, one of the mistakes that Melendez made when he did stand up, he stayed there. He could have easily got on his bicycle, got out of harm's way, and then engaged again. But he stood. He tried to stay there and look for an opportunity, and it was none. Yeah, there was that triangle choke for a moment. Diego Melendez was throwing it up, looking for an arm bar, a triangle. We see the, the blood coming down a little bit more on the chest of Diego Melendez coming from Freelance right eye just a, a little more than 30 seconds left in the fight it didn't look like a problem on the feet it doesn't look like Rosales wants to stop it and take a look at it Melinda's looking for that Hail Mary submission because I think he's, he's with the two takedowns and, and little attack on the feet I think he's lost this round and he's really run out of time here Beautiful job by Freeland as uh, Sean Tompkins says just avoids the, the takedown now look he's attacking the right arm he just wants to secure the win, you know. He's trying to go out there and uh, put it out all out. But he's still, he's still being aggressive all the way to yeah. the end. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta applaud him for that. Yeah, great fight by Tyler Freeland. I think he's got this thing two rounds to one. Should walk away with a decision, and you can't say enough because he got absolutely dropped, and he's got a little dance. He's got a little jig for you. <laughs> a little, little sea walk there. Yeah. I don't know what you call it when little guys do it. Maybe it's a B walk. He hasn't quite hit the C yet, but uh, he fought, a, he fought <laughs> an excellent fight here. After almost being stopped, uh, he took a big punch, went down, and popped right back up. Shows he has the heart of a champion. Yeah, it well, really did. You know, also, it, it has to do a lot with his coaching. You know, after first round, Tom Conkers went out there and told him to take him down. Yeah, he, he definitely saw yeah. the strategy turn. Uh, and, and you don't have to stand toe to toe, you don't have to prove to people that you are, in fact, you know, the Hulk hands. Yeah. You know, work. let your Hulk hands work on the ground. Hey, you can't go out there and try to, you know, fight a longer guy, you know, try to outbox him. You go out there, take him down and See do See the replay job. here again, he was he was trying to get that triangle. It just, it wasn't working. Not this late in the fight. Uh, no, I think uh, when Diego Melendez is watching this fight again, he's gonna be frustrated with himself that he didn't do more to get back to his feet. He got back to his feet once in that third round, he was, and he was placed there again. You know, perhaps that just frustrated him enough that he just got comfortable on his back. But excellent performance by Tyler Freeland, who, uh, you know, I thought was nearly done in the opening round after after just an intense flurry between the two. Great action. All right, let's take up this in the ring and get a decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three exciting rounds, we go to the scorecards one more time. Put your hands together for these two professional debuts tonight. And here are the judges' scoring totals. Judge Jason McCoy scores at 30 to 27. A. Bellardo and Jackie Dinkin have it 29 28. All three for your winner by unanimous decision, Tyler Hulk Hands Freeland!